fellow Falcoholic channel members and patrons. What is up? Welcome to the Dirty Birds and Brews podcast slash Falcoholic Live's first live Falcons mock draft of the 2024 cycle. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, I am, of course, Kevin I and we're joined for the first time in a little while. Welcoming back to the show, Adnan Ikic at Say Which Way. Adnan, how are you doing on this fine day? Uh, I'm doing very well. I'm very excited because it is technically draft month. So, you know what? We can talk all the draft. I know I'm normally a proponent of, you know, slowing everyone's role. You know, I'm, I'm that guy when yep, it yep, comes to yep, yep. when it comes to the talking about the draft in December or, you know, in January. But, you know, what? it's April. Full steam ahead. Full steam ahead. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it's. We're happy to have you because we we honestly like we we spent like the majority of the first part of this season basically talking about the coaching search and free agency and all this stuff and like I feel like we haven't really the two of us gotten to the draft a ton yet so this is a great opportunity to start that process uh, and yeah wait, just wait, wait. I'm, oh. I'm frozen yeah I'm I see frozen. your videos frozen let me what what why is my video frozen hold on I can hear you. Okay, okay. The video's back. We're back, everyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think uh, Mad Tom K was saying, you, you know, Adnan being here is just an April Fool's prank. You know, that's he's not really here. This is a recording. This whole thing has been recorded. It's very yeah, clever. Yeah. It's all in post. I'm, yeah, I'm actually AI. Um, the Falcons, the Falcoholic has so much money that they can afford this. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, they, 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 they cut our pay for this, by the way. Yes, we, we're all AI. <laughs> this is an elaborate simulation. Uh that's the next step in, in our... Um... So they, they're testing out AI for us to not... Um, for them to not have to pay us at all. They right. actually they actually forced us to sign away our um, our, our, our image and likeness. Our NIL. We, it's like a reverse NIL deal. Like, we actually just don't get anything. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I have right. been gone for a while. I have been gone for a while. And, you know, um, you, you know, I, I'll, I'll be back in a couple of weeks. It's, yeah. you know... Yeah, what we're... the hawks appear to have life which is kind of cool right um that's yeah, always on. nice yeah we beat the celtics we beat the celtics twice, twice. yeah twice so, yeah hey, I mean, that who, seems who exciting thought? to me hey, who, who would have thought not me who would have thought right my blur not is me. like this is hilarious my blur is like making it so you can only see the top like left of my camera that's really funny okay well we'll just go without the blur you guys can see how messy my office actually is uh it's been obscured all these years by the blur but uh, you'll just get the, the full blast here on the show. But guys, welcome to our channel members and, members and patrons. Thanks, everyone, for coming in and joining us today. Uh, I know we have some folks that uh, send their condolences, uh, and I'll make sure to uh, ping everyone to make sure folks know we're getting started now. But uh, thank you guys for your patience with, with these. Uh, I've had some like personal stuff that's basically made my schedule quite full uh, this off season. so I appreciate uh, your patience as we got into the draft season uh, it hasn't really affected like the show itself but there haven't been as many like exclusive patron shows as i would like uh and channel members welcome to the youtube folks as well uh so that's something i would definitely like to work on uh and to, to start with that we're probably going to have like two patron live mock drafts this month in addition to like one just public one probably right before the draft but uh thank you guys for your patience and support uh through the season and through all the seasons uh it's it's great to have you guys here. I know we still have a lot of diehards uh, back from the, the early days uh, that have joined our, our new folks. Um, and for those of you that won the Fantasy Leagues, uh, your prizes will be merch. I am in the process of working on merch. I have been for some time. It's more complicated than I thought it would be to find good merch. Um, I thought it would be pretty simple, but it's less simple than I had hoped. But when the merch comes, you will receive merch. Uh Probably either like your choice of like a t-shirt or a hat or whatever it is that you want. One of those sorts of things. Um, so don't worry. We're not going to forget who won the Fantasy Leagues. I'm sure you won't let us forget. Uh, but uh, did want to make sure you guys know that you will be receiving merch. Uh, you'll be one of the first 
people to get some when we do have it and we appreciate your patience on that as well uh because i would also like to wear merch like to training camp and to like senior bowl and stuff I was like gonna that say, you like, know? yeah some recent merch like yes i don't yeah. know on you will get some merch I'll, we'll put that on the show you know you can refer back to there if you don't receive your merch you know but I, I, uh, i'm over here like damn do i need to win a fantasy league to like yes. actually get some money out? no i'm really cheap you know you don't get any merch you gotta buy it full price um you know just like everybody else but like you know, I got to the semifinal of uh of the league that I was in, but you know, I guess that wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you think this is the participation trophy? You know, fantasy leagues here or no? Fair, fair. But fair, uh, fair, fair. yep. Well, guys, uh, real quick, uh, I don't have time to actually record a separate ad read. I normally would not subject you guys to this ad read during the patron show, but I actually have like a commitment immediately following the show so i don't have time to like record a separate ad read and like edit it in so i'm going to do the ad read for bet online real quick i appreciate everyone for, for bearing with me on this to save me like half an hour of maneuvering later but guys betonline.ag still thanks to our sponsors for sponsoring today's episode the tournament is here march madness we're in the elite eight the final four for the women getting started and bet online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best Bracket contests out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship itself. And you can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices and even track your bracket real-time all the way through the tournament. So what are you waiting for, guys? Head to Bet Online today and get in on all the action. Just remember to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. All right. Thank you, folks, for that. Now, let's go ahead and get into this mock draft. Um, we will we'll go like we'll go a ways. You know, I I don't know how interested everyone is in making all these like six round picks. But, you know, if, if you know, we'll see how much time we end up taking with the earlier ones, because sometimes, you know, we take a long time on these earlier picks. And so those are the more important ones. So we'll, we'll spend the majority of the show on that. And then, you know, maybe we'll do something quick for the, the last few picks but we will definitely be getting your guys thoughts and also just talking about the guys who are available on the draft board as we go through um so yeah let's let's get right to it um in case you guys haven't seen you know the big expose on draft network their their mock draft machine no longer functions so now we're using pff's mock draft simulator uh which is also nice i think they've, they've done a lot of good work on it shout out to trevor sikkim i know he's been behind a lot of the improvements over there at pff i think they've like incorporated a composite sort of draft board that takes into account like rankings from all over um you know the draft sphere and everything um so it's not just pff rankings determining this stuff so it also shows you like the average position that people doing the draft simulator tend to draft players so you get an idea of sort of like what the rankings say and where th people actually end up getting drafted so it's very interesting but i will go ahead and read off um we're not going to do trades in this one. For the next one that we do, we will do trades. But I figure for the first one, we'll keep it relatively simple here. Uh, and yeah, so top top names interesting to the Falcons we'll start with, which would be Roma Dunze is the receiver that's left. Um, the top seven of the draft went Caleb Williams one. That one's pretty much like a done deal, it seems like. Uh, and then after that, it seems pretty much open. Like we could see different things happen depending and this draft, I feel like, is, like, relatively chalky. Like, that there are four quarterbacks that go uh, two, two wide receivers and then Joe Alt. Um, I think that's probably the most likely scenario at this point. So we had Caleb Williams, one. Jaden Daniels, two. Drake May, three. Marvin Harrison, Jr., four. Uh, the Chargers take Joe Alt at five. And then the Giants take J.J. McCarthy at six. And Malik Neighbors goes seven to the Titans. Um, that the, Those players going in that order, I think, are pretty common um you know and and so i think this is actually a pretty realistic scenario i do wonder if you know we'll see the vikings try to get to four or five to get ahead of like the giants to get mccarthy but you know we'll have to see how that shakes out it's not all that important for the falcons unless one of the quarterbacks like hey, that's not our go. problem anymore. yeah it's not our problem we anymore. Got our quarterback. <laughs> not my problem not my problem um, um i do think it's a weird so just quick tangent have you noticed um over the past few years, just in comparison to, let's say, a draft a decade ago or 15 years ago, it seems like more – like, this isn't just me, right? It seems like more and more quarterbacks are just going top five yeah. or top ten. Like, that quarterback tax seems like it's absolutely, like, 
at the at its peak like i don't remember when i was younger like even even up to like in a wait let's say for example when the falcons drafted matt ryan the only two quarterbacks that went were matt ryan and joe flacco now it seems like every single year more and more quarterbacks are going top 10 even ones that like you know probably don't deserve to be there quote unquote but it's just interesting to see you know the reaction of teams as this has become more and more of a quarterback driven league like for example jj mccarthy we're talking about him as a consensus top 10 pick i don't think he he should be near the top 10 in in, in my personal opinion right. just like what what i've seen from him like on film and and uh, at michigan but it's just it's just a really interesting thing and it's something that's very advantageous for you if you are a team that doesn't need a quarterback because the more quarterbacks that go ahead of the falcons the better cuz you know, now you have this selection option. You have this selection of players, you know, that are there that are, you know, non-quarterbacks. Personally, I've been beating the Joe Alt drum for years, or not years, for weeks, um, months. I think that's my number one player for the Falcons on my board. He's obviously not there. I don't think he's going to be there. Mm. Um, but that is just one of those names where, if he is there, I would I would like to go BPA and take him, even though the team has other needs. But man, getting getting a successor to Jake Matthews and someone who can play right tackle from day one, like mm-hmm. that's you know, I, I love Caleb McGarry. Like we all like mm-hmm. Caleb McGarry. I don't think McGarry is good enough to justify passing a player of Joe Alt's caliber. But yeah, I'm not really gonna go too deep into that because Joe Alt is not on the board. Just. Just a couple of interesting initial thoughts yeah. as I see this draft board. No, I agree. I think Joe Alt definitely is one that would make you stop and think at the very least about about that potential. It's just not the cleanest fit, but it's absolutely like he's a, a BPA sort of dictates that you at least need to consider that or at least consider trading down from that. Um, <laughs> the one like unexpected guy that does end up falling here is... Roma Dunze, the wide receiver from Washington. And, you know, I think the one that would make them really, really consider taking a receiver is probably Malik Neighbors. I mean, Marvin Harrison's not going to fall, so I won't even really talk about that. But Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbors, you know, it really depends. But I, I think Malik Neighbors is like the perfect complement for Drake London in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I think it would be very, very tempting. I think Roma Dunze isn't quite as tempting but again it it is an interesting conversation and then obviously Brock Bowers is here but I just don't think they're going to value that no. like he's he's absolutely a top 10 like talent it's just they're not going to value another tight end like that um the team so, should be yeah. hoping that the Chargers take Bowers or they fall in love with Bowers or you know someone ahead of them also takes Bowers because right. you know go dogs but yeah you're, you're not taking a tight end I actually have a Dunze it's a hot take. It was a slightly hot take. I actually like Odunze better than Neighbors. I know there's a lot of people that do. I don't even think it's that hot. I think it's just, it depends on what you like. But yeah. I just feel like Odunze is a little more similar to Drake. So I, I feel like Neighbors is more of like a compliment. But it's not like, I mean, again. I just I, can't get I over the yeah. combination of the size and the route running ability. Yeah, he's special. And I, I think there's a lot like, I think that's a really good mixture that has provided some really good NFL players where, you know, if you can run the, if you can run the entire route tree, it's going to be a really, if you can run the entire route tree at six, three, it's like, all right, now we're talking about some like elite level company Um, here. I, I would seriously consider him at eight. That would be the fun pick. Like that would be the <laughs> pick to, Really, just load in the offense and just go all out. Um, of course, Edge is also right there as well. Um, you know, we don't. Of course, we need to preface. We have the caveat. We don't know the medicals. We don't know the interviews. We're just doing this. You know, as two as two guys streaming who only have the information to the public. My top Edge guys, lot to. I know um, Dallas Turner is there. Uh, Jared Verse is in the conversation. Just assuming that all the medicals are clear and all the medicals are like really good for Law Two, and that and you know it's all clean and there's no reason for us to suspect that it's not. Um, I think 
I don't know, my personal pick here would probably be Law 2, just sort of having the need, edging out the the overall talent where right. I think Odunze is BPA, but I don't think he's that much better than Law 2 to justify going receiver over, over edge when you sort of need edge a bit more. Yeah, I agree. And like the the patrons all agree. Uh, I ran a poll saying which position do you guys think we should target through an edge corner and receiver? Because I think the only other position I would probably that's probably in play here is corner, maybe with Quinion Mitchell, if you really love him, which I, I do think he's very good. But I don't know that he's really top 10 to me, at least not over like an edge rusher or like one of the top three receivers. Um, but the uh, the patrons have spoken as all seven. All seven want an edge rusher here. <laughs> so like, we're going to go the edge direction, which again, I think that's like the chalkier idea. Um, but all three of the edge guys are there. And I think there's, there's obviously like a, a, a case for all of them, like Latu, Turner, Verse. You know, I think the only thing that like gives me pause on Verse at all is that I feel like he's a better 4-3 defensive end, whereas I think Latu and Turner are better 3-4 guys. So that's why I think the, the Falcons are probably focused a little bit more on Latu and Turner. But again, I, I agree with you, um, Adnan, that like they're all good options. And I think, you know, to me, the Latu's testing, where he actually tested out really well um, and and actually weighed in really well too, like close to 260 i think he was over 260 at his pro day when he ran those really good short shuttle and three cone times um he kind of i think he closed the gap on turner like don't get me wrong like turner is a better athlete turner does have that elite length that latu doesn't i think that's the one real knock on latu is that he doesn't have great length but it doesn't matter so much when you're so good technically like he's like he's already knows how to get to to basically eliminate issues with his length because he's so technically advanced whereas like it's just it's not really a problem for him um where i think as for someone else that that didn't have his technical ability the length would be a bigger issue um but he just makes it not an issue so and the thing is that's one of those things that just translates really well to like we've had some and i'm not comparing Turner to these guys um, or, you know, hating on him. But we have had some guys who have been, you know, really good athletes, but haven't really been there when it comes to the moves and counter moves uh, in the past. And we've seen how that sort of can burn you to the point where if you're giving me the option between two really good edge rushers and Dallas Turner would not be a bad pick by any means. No. Um, then uh, I would I would prefer to go with the guy who, you know, does have a wider array of counter moves, um, just because that that works. That's proven to work in the NFL, and you know, hopefully, the Falcons' pass rush is a lot better next year with one of these guys. Like the team got forty sacks last year. We, yeah. we didn't see I didn't see that coming, um, but those sacks. Not a lot. The edge group still overall underwhelmed. Yes, um, definitely. In spite of in spite of those really high stats, this year if you can get one of those edge guys into the room, and you know you can sort of get Arnold Abikadi to get that you know step up, and we saw Abikadi wasn't really a factor at the very beginning of the season, uh, and then he he came on more and more toward the middle and, and the end of the season. You know, who knows what that was. Maybe he just, you know, he probably just wasn't a scheme fit. Um, now we have a new defensive coordinator or a new defensive mind, a new defensive yeah. scheme. Yeah. Um, if you can get anything from D'Angelo Malone, he's he's given you nothing as a third round pick so far. Then, you know, maybe the Falcons can sort of build this edge group to being, you know, more so toward, you know, the middle of the pack as opposed to just sort of bad. And you know the team, like, team has been trying to upgrade. They tried yeah. to trade Montez Sweat, didn't happen. Uh, depending on the reports you believe, maybe they were in on Hassan Reddick, didn't happen. So, you know, they have this as as a circled need. And, you know, getting a guy like a Latu or a Dallas Turner, you can 
arguably get your best edge since John Abraham. Yeah. Not not that that's a really high bar to clear for for this franchise, but you know, you can sort of finally get that get that position out of the way that has plagued you for years and years. Yeah. No, I agree. And I you know, the the people have spoken they want an edge rusher, we're going to take an edge rusher. I think to me it it's been funny because Laya Tulatu played at UCLA. We, met, we all know who else played at UCLA, Tack McKinley. And That's... that has led to people comparing the two. They're nothing alike, honestly. Like, I know some people are like, oh, they're sim- they're not similar. They're not similar at all. They're not a similar body type. They don't have similar length. They don't have similar testing. They don't have similar production. Um, it's a ridiculous comparison. You know who does compare to Tack McKinley? Dallas Turner. <laughs> now, That's... Dallas Turner is more athletic. Don't get me wrong. Dallas Turner's agilities were significantly better. But Dallas Turner has the exact same body type, 6'2", 250, long arms. Now, that's not the entire profile, but Dallas Turner's production is a lot more similar to Tack McKinley's than it is to Laiatu Latu. So, like, it's just funny to me that people compare Latu to Tack because they went to UCLA, when really the, the much closer comparison for Tack is Dallas Turner. Yeah. So, And I didn't want to bring it up, like, directly, but... yeah. yeah. That, that's what I was thinking in my mind when I was saying previous players who yeah. haven't had that technical ability. Uh, oh, Tack and Big Beasley. But yeah, I was like, I was picturing the, you know, Dallas Turner, Tack McKinley comparison. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, Turner is going to be a bust the way that no, Tack no. was. Or, you know, that he would be, you know, sort of, I don't want to say off the field distraction, but Tack did have some like, you know some stuff where he had some strong takes yeah yeah he had some strong and remember he like sacks uh he has that first really good play against the seahawks of the season puts up the five for the uh fifth year option being declined and then he proved to the falcons why they were right in declining that fifth year option that's exactly Um, right it's the same as like a few years ago with like you know brian burns was was the big name and it's like oh he's gonna be another vic beasley because you know they're similar in height Mm-hmm. It's like that's you know, you can't make these kinds of. There's more to it than just yeah. like the raw measurables. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you gotta look at the whole yeah, player. All yeah. of this to say, my my pick would probably be a lot two here. Yeah, no, I agree. We're gonna go with Latu here. I think that one's gonna pick up more steam, and I I think everything I heard suggests Latu got the 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 thumbs up at the combine in terms of his medicals as well. So he he aced the testing. He. Obviously, the film is the best of any of the edge rushers, so there's already that. And then if he got the thumbs up medically at the combine, I don't really know what there is to keep him from being edge one, other than that we know that Dallas Turner is like the prototype 3-4 edge rusher in terms of a size athleticism standpoint. But Latu's close enough, other than the length. Dallas Turner has a clear length advantage, no question. But like, man, I, I think Latu closed the gap to the point where I, I'm going to probably end with Latu as, as the top target um and also a lot of going to benefit from like it's not going to be a lot of drop fatigue because everyone was talking about turner top 10 turner top 10 turner top 10 and you know some of those guys like drop fatigue is a real thing yeah like after some time like teams are going to start you know outsmarting themselves a little bit i I mean the perfect example with the falcons of 2018 was calvin ridley right ridley had no business at all following the 26 Right. At some point, he was like a consensus top 10 pick early on the co- in the process. And then it's like, you know, team just sort of it, it, the draft. It takes too long to get to the draft uh, yeah. between the end of the season, the draft or, you know, lot to won't have that problem because now he's going to be that new prospect in the top 10. Um, but yeah, it's he doesn't have to overcome draft fatigue uh, as well, which. You know, as much as we don't want it to be a serious thing, it's a real thing. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, all right, so for the second round, this is quite quite a group that we got to decide between. Both the quarterbacks, uh, Bo Nix and Michael Penix are still here. Tyler Newbin at safety, top player available, still here. I've had him, I've taken him here before for the Falcons. Um, Lad McConkey still here. Go TJ dog. Tampa, the corner still here. This would be like an I like an ideal situation for the Falcons, where I could see them taking any of these guys. Um, so let me 
I'm gonna run a poll with uh, I'm gonna, the four guys I'm gonna put for the poll. Just want to make sure this is cool with you, uh, non lad, uh, Tyler Newbin, TJ Tampa, and then do you prefer Michael Penix or Bo Nix? I'll put one of the quarterbacks in there too. Uh, if I uh, if you're twisting my arm, it'll be Michael Penix. Okay, I'm gonna put him in there, but um, so it's up to, it's up to you guys. But we'll talk about it. like Tyler Newbin is the number one safety. I think yeah. he is a first round caliber player. He would be a perfect fit next to yep. Jesse Bates. It's not like sexy like Lad would be, right? Um, but I I do think he's the best player available. But Lad McConkey is absolutely right there with him as like a very quality like wide it's receiver. Definitely yeah, not sexy because Newbin like you know it's a speed with Newbin, right? Like he's yeah. not like the the long range, long distance speed and players who don't aren't like high-end speed or like tend to be less sexy you know in the eyes of fans uh, maybe in the eyes of some teams you know shout out to the al davis led oakland raiders <laughs> um but yeah like safety is a a genuine need like it, it is absolutely a need like i'm i'm done with richie grant as, yeah. as a starter for my team i'm sorry that was you have to admit sunk cost at some point the Falcons got it wrong, uh, spending a second round pick on Richie Grant. I know that uh, Terry Fontenot made that pick. Uh, Raheem Morris isn't as tied to Richie Grant as Terry Fontenot might be, but we have to admit that that pick was just bad. Uh, yeah. And then the Falcons having a chance to drop what Javon Holland and mm-hmm. trading out of that pick was bad. The Falcons taking Grant over Creed Humphrey was bad. Yeah. You know, we liked the Richie Grant pick at the time, but we didn't expect him to you know, get burned by tight ends over the middle so many times uh, in the NFL and to not figure it out. We could not see it coming that he was going to have trouble with the playbook in his rookie year and that that would cost him most of his rookie season. The Falcons cannot go into 2024. 2024. The Falcons cannot go into 24 with Richie Grant starting at at strong safety. Like, I'm sorry, it, it you just can't. Um, and they did not address safety in the in free agency, which means that they likely might in the draft. Lad McConkey, man, another great pick, and yeah. you know that you know that this offense would cook with him. Yeah. Uh, you know he fits that st- that prototypical like Los Angeles Rams type you know system player. You know, yeah. um. This is a hard choice. Like this yeah. is a really and then TJ hard. Tampa, I think, is a really great fit for like this defense too at corner. Like he's probably one of the only corners I would consider here. So he's interesting. If you're really of the mind that like you really like Michael Penix or, or Bo Nix, like I think I don't think I think one or both of them will probably be gone here. But like it's interesting. But the problem is I think bo- they're both older quarterbacks. So it's like you'd love to get a developmental guy behind uh, Kirk, but like they're both like not great guys to sit for two or three years because they're already 25. So it's like it's not great. But um, yeah, I mean, I could definitely see an argument for a lot of these guys. The the, I mean, it's it's currently uh, a tie between Lad McConkey and Tyler Newbin. Both have 33 percent of the vote. Um, so we'll have to break the tie uh, on unless we get more votes. You guys want to? If anybody else wants to weigh in, uh, this is your opportunity. Before we have to break the tie, yeah. but yeah. and also like you know, just touching on TJ Tampa, like cornerback is probably going to be a need sooner rather than later. I mean, it's a need now. Um, I, I don't know if this is a take which you know some people will agree with or won't agree with. I, if I was the Falcons, I'd be proactive when it comes to AJ Jarrell. Yeah, I personally don't think he's good enough to get paid high end cornerback money, and. You know, I personally wouldn't like the Falcons giving him over $20 million a year that he'll probably be looking for. Um, if I was the Falcons, I, I, I want to go the luxurious need route with him. Yeah, like, he, you know, he's getting luxurious need money. I don't think the Falcons will give him anything more than Snead got. So, yeah, no, no I, I mean, like, go the luxurious, luxurious need route of all right, play him out this year and then tag and trade him for, yeah. you know, try to get, try to get what, what did Snead go for a second? Yeah, a future second, yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, 
I it would... wasn't even that much. I don't think it was like that. They didn't get great compensation for him, honestly. Um, but like but, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Like I don't think Terrell is. I think Terrell is playing off of a really good reputation he got in his sophomore season. I don't think he's been that guy since. He's been solid. He's been a really solid player. But yeah, I, I would definitely the same way that I was talking about Joe Alt and being proactive with the left, left tackle. It may be advantageous to sort of be proactive with cornerback as well. And that's where, uh, t- you know, drafting a quarterback could come in handy. But yeah, definitely those, you know, th- yeah. those are my opinions on cornerback. And there's a lot of holes. Like you're not going to be yeah. able to fix, fix all no. of these holes all that's at once. True. Yeah. No, uh, and, and- it, yeah. yeah, so we did get the tie-breaking vote for Lad, and I've never, I haven't actually drafted Lad before, so I think that's an interesting one. So we'll go with Lad here, um, and see how the rest of this draft plays out. But I, I think he's so tempting because, like, honestly, like he's the perfect slot receiver for this style of offense. He would be a great addition. He would slot right in and be like someone that could. Re- we, j- he's like a guy that's just going to come in and be able to contribute right away. So I think that one makes a ton of sense too. Um, yeah, I mean. Hey, you you want to build this offense up around Kirk Cousins as well? You want to maximize Kirk Cousins while he's here over these next couple of years? And the team does still have a need at wide receiver. Um, you know, yeah. they went out and got – they addressed the position a little bit. But, you know, I, I don't really see Darnell Mooney as a wide receiver too. Yep. Uh, Rondale Moore, we'll, we'll see what he's got, but he really hasn't done much in the NFL at this point. Right. Hopefully, a change of scenery helps unlock him a little bit. Um, but the team is still in need of that wide receiver, too, you know, especially for when Drake London does get doubled. Uh, I assume you can make the argument that Kyle Pitts is your wide receiver, too, but, you know, it's not the same as Arthur Smith's system, where where the tight end is is more valued, and you're and you're running more of those two tight end systems. What we saw with the Rams that they have multiple contributors at wide receiver, and Lad McConkey can come in and make an impact right away. Yeah, absolutely, he can. Um, it's definitely it's an interesting one that I haven't done before, so I'm I'm excited uh, with that one. And getting in here to the third round, the Falcons do have two picks, uh, like four picks apart at 74 and 79. Um, so looking here, obviously Spencer Rattler's here. We've heard some buzz that the Falcons are interested in him. Um, and he makes a little bit more sense from that developmental timeline, given where he is in his process. Um, Tavondre Sweat, a fan favorite, one of my favorites as well. Um, Austin Booker, the edge rusher from Kansas. The Falcons want to double up at edge. He's been someone who is quite interesting. Um, he really impressed at the has, Senior Bowl. Had some good testing as well. Um, has Abrams Drain gone? No. So we could throw him in there too. Um, I think he's definitely someone that's in, p- in play at this part of the draft as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'll throw Chris. So I'm going to put in um, Rattler, Sweat, Booker, and Abrams Drain. Normally I'd put a wide receiver in here, but we just took um, yeah, Conkey, um, So I'm probably... If you want to go develop a mental quarterback, Rattler in round three makes way more sense than Penix or Nixon in round two. Um, we know he has the talent. Yeah. Like, like Rattler was, you know, one of the top guys in high school. I know there, you know, were some, you know, some attitude issues a little bit. If you watch that uh, quarterback documentary that he was on, we saw that he, you, you know, he did transfer to South Carolina. I think he held his own over there. But, you know, if you if you want to make a, a succession plan, I, I'm, I'm just not – I'm not a huge fan of, like, taking quarterbacks in the middle rounds and then just, like, sort of, you know, throwing your faith behind them. We just saw it with, Yeah, I was going to say, oh, that, that didn't just work out so well for the Falcons, right? Yeah. yeah. But it also just almost never works out. Like, sure – worked out with Russell Wilson, it worked out with Dak Prescott, but for for as many Russell Wilsons as there are, there's 20 Kellen Mons. Um, you know, worked out with Jimmy Garoppolo, sure, but, you know, for as many Jimmy Garoppolo's, there's like 15 Brian Browns. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you know, the, the odds just aren't in your favor, but 
if the team falls in love with Rattler, then you know they fall in love with Rattler. But I don't know. I'm just not a. I'm not a big fan of just like taking a court because these are still valuable picks. Like yeah, it's still yeah, a yeah. big two pick, and you mm-hmm. can still get a legitimate contributor here. Yeah. Well. Tavondre Sweat is running away with it uh, here with, in the voting. So, I, I mean, I don't blame people for that. I think if Sweat does fall here, he's a really good value. He fills a need. This team doesn't really have that space-eating nose tackle. They haven't had it for a while. But going back to this 3-4, I think getting that type of player makes sense. I think Sweat has a lot of poten- potential. Um, I think Sweat has a lot of potential to slim down a little bit more, get to that, like, 340 range. And I, I think if he can keep his weight in that, like, 340 range, he has, like, Dontari Poe type of upside. Like, I think he is a very gifted nose tackle. He just needs to keep his weight under control. Um, And we saw it at Texas. I mean, he he was impressive as a pass rusher at times. Um, He just can't handle a big snap count Um, at the NFL level, I don't think, if he's playing at 360. Like, it's just, it's so hard to do that in the NFL. Like no, no one has really been able to do that successfully. So, yeah, I, I mean, there's I, like yeah. Vince Wilkford, but he's a genetic. Right. Like, yes, you know, like yeah. yeah. No. Sweat wouldn't be in the third round if he was like a, a region of Vince Wilkford. Yes, exactly. But it's like a, you know, a big space eater, mm-hmm. and I mean, you hit on it. You have to be able to rush the passer in the NFL if you want to be successful anywhere on the D line. This isn't. This isn't your dad's NFL. This isn't the NFL of 20 years ago where you can have that 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 uh, run defense specialist in there where, you know, he's not really going to hurt the quarterback, but you can, like, put him in and he's really going to, like, disrupt the right. That's, that's sort of just, like, that, that specialist is sort of going away. And we talked about it earlier with so many quarterbacks going in the top five, going in the top ten these days. That's what – that's part of uh, the reactions uh, of this league becoming such a passing league, such a pass heavy. It's part of the, it's part of the results of this analytical movement where right now, you know what, you got to go get the passer. That yeah. That's the number one priority. And then if you can stop the run, that's great, but that's secondary. Yeah. And sweat can go get the passer. Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can. Yeah, and, and I mean, even if he does have those limited snap counts, that's sort of baked into the cost a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like that's why he's lasting this long is because teams don't know for sure if they can get that weight down. How many snaps can they actually give him? The snaps that he does play will be impactful. That's why I'm confident in taking him, and, and the upside I think is absolutely worth it. Um, and you don't need him to be a starter day one too. Like you have Grady no. Jarrett, you have David Onyemata. Um, exactly. But. Like he, you can put him into a position to succeed right away from day one. Uh, you're not going to really task him to to overdo it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, Grady Jarrett's ready week one uh, after his season-ending injury last year. Yep. Um, but yeah, like David Onyemata is still there, and you know you, you want to build up that that depth and. God, for once, I just want a third rounder that's actually, you know, <laughs> We got two this year, so, like, one of them's got to do something, right? I mean... I mean, like, the last couple of... Uh, was it Ritter and Malone went, went the same draft? Yeah. Like, man, talk about, like, two strikeouts, like, back to the... Yeah. I mean, like, I know Jury's still out on D'Angelo Malone, but... Yeah. He's done nothing so far. Yeah, I I do like D'Angelo Malone. I, I think the flashes he showed as a rookie were interesting for sure. We really and liked then, him in college. Yeah, like, yeah, but it's, exactly. It's just yeah. Like we need to see some impact at the NFL level as well, and maybe, maybe like getting that new, you know, getting Jimmy Lake in here, getting Raheem Boris to run in here to run the defense. Maybe that's going to be what's needed for him. Hopefully, it is the same yeah. way that you know getting a new offensive mind uh, will hopefully unlock. Rondale Moore. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to go with Sweat here. That was definitely the runaway favorite. Add some beef to this mock. Um, And then for this next group of guys, uh, Spencer Rattler is still here at 79. So I'm putting him back on the board. Same thing with Abram Strain. Um, Austin Booker went, so I changed the edge pick to Gabriel Murphy, who is Latu's teammate. Also an athletic guy, uh, good pass rusher. Not on Latu's level, but 
otherwise has a similar game. And then my favorite safety in this range is Texas Tech's uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson. So I want to add him in there because I still think safety is a big need. Um, yeah. So, you know, and he's good. He's really underrated. I would encourage everyone to go read like Lance Airlines write up on him. He's been rising up people's boards. So um, he's good. And then Chris Abrams drain, you know, a big riser from the senior bowl. Uh, really good, like, zone corner. I mean, I, I think in, in man, he's a little bit more limited. You need some work there. But if you're looking for him to play zone, which is what the Falcons are going to be primarily playing in this new defense, um, he's a good he's a good pick, too. Um, I think, to me, like, Dadrian Taylor Demerson's probably higher on my board. But I won't blame anyone that likes Chris Abrams drain. And because and, corner, I think, is just as much of a need. But, um, yeah, I mean, those are probably the four that I'd have. I like a lot of times wide receiver is here if you haven't taken one yet, but we already got lads. So I feel like they're probably going to wait to take another receiver if they do take one until like day three at this stage. So, And also with Demerson, you know, you do have that sexy speed in there. You yeah. know, and he's got like maybe the longest name in the draft, like altogether, like number of characters. So I just want to see them try to squeeze that into the jersey because uh, they get they had to make the font smaller and all that. It's It's pretty great. So. The, the, I mean, the aesthetics alone, you know. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of these jerseys, like hopefully it's the last year with them. On, uh, I guess we'll I, see. Yeah. I've made my chagrin very, very open when it comes to the jerseys. You, you know, I I hate the numbers. I I just low key if it was up to me, we would replace them when we can. And yeah, we I hate just, the numbers. The rest of it's like fine with me. I just don't like the numbers. Like, I also don't like having like not having a primary red. Like yeah, I, I get they need to, like yeah. the black jerseys are like okay. Um, I like the primary black, but they need to have a red in the rotation at least. Like, yeah, like they don't. The only red they have is the gradient, and they mm. never wear. Have they worn the gradient once? Yeah, like yeah, they they wore it like one year, and then they stopped putting it on the schedule, which is weird because I thought it actually looks good. Like I think it actually like surprisingly looked pretty good when they actually wore it with the black pants. Um. But yeah, it's just like nope, we're we're done with the gradients. They just like threw them in the trash can, so that was interesting. But uh, um, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm down to throw all the jerseys in the trash can and just like <laughs> never speak of it again and just go with a with the sort of an '80s type like look, yeah, like what they had in the '80s. Um, but you know, that's that's another topic for for the dead period. Yeah. Um, for me personally, I would go with one of the secondary guys. Um, yeah. We Abram might have drain. to break the tie. Like Taylor right now, Demerson. Abrams Drain and, and Taylor Demerson are tied. So both of them have three names. Yep, that's true. So, so you know, for whatever that's worth. Yep. Um, yep. But more importantly, the team does need to address corner. The team does need to address safety. Oh, if it if it was up to me having to break the tie, um, just from a positional standpoint, I think safety is a bit more pressing than cornerback because you still have AJ Terrell for this year. Um, I mean, likely longer, but you know, I just gave my opinion on it. Yeah. Um, you do need another corner, but Clark Phillips showed his flashes uh, last year. Yeah, and I think he's a better zone fit too. So I think he, yeah. there's a chance he could play better in this scheme. Yeah. And Phillips not only like showed his flashes, but you know, he outright replaced Jeff Okuda as, yeah. as a starter toward the end of the season. Like that's one of those picks where we, this team has a lot of needs, but that's where hitting on day three picks like Clark Phillips last year is invaluable and yeah. hitting on those undrafted rookies is absolutely invaluable because now that opens the door to not have to take a cornerback so high or as a pressing need. And you can sort of, you know, make up for your mistake on on that swing and miss with Richie Grant a couple of years earlier. So, you know, maybe it it sort of even evens out at the end of the day. Um, yeah. My pick here would be Taylor Demerson. Yeah, I agree. So we'll, we'll go with Taylor Demerson here and we'll look at corner probably with our next pick. Um, All right, let's see what we got here at 109 in the fourth round. That'll be the Falcons' next pick. All right, so Chris Abrams' drain still here. So, I mean, that's, that's nice. That that sort of makes it that makes yeah, it easy. I mean, man. Well, yeah, like, we probably just take we probably just take him because I think he was tied with De Taylor Demerson. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that that would make a lot of sense. Obviously, um, 
Yeah, I mean, honestly, in this range, I don't see anyone else that's, like, really screaming to get above him. I mean, Cam Hart would have been probably the next corner I would look at, but I don't think I would take him over Abrams Drain. Um, I mean, we, also, we don't have to feel bad because there is leg- a legit chance that Abrams Drain is there in the fourth round. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, the third to the fourth is kind of his range, so. Like, this um, isn't one of those where it's, like, super four. But it's not like, no. oh, Lots is there in the second. Like, okay. Yeah, no, Abrams Drain's rank on the board is like 114 or 108 in terms of when he's usually drafted. So, like, right around this range. So, um, I don't think, like, he'd be overdrafted in the third round, but I think this is probably his floor or so. So, yeah, I mean, I think him going here wouldn't be that crazy. So, um, yeah, I mean, for all the reasons we just said, Chris Abrams Drain here at at, uh, 108 and probably don't need to do another poll because he already had a bunch of support with the last pick. So, I have to imagine he'd be very popular here and fits the need so we'll go ahead and make that one um and see where we're at in the fifth round here at pick 143 all right so here this is kind of a free-for-all spot honestly it's kind of just like have your pick if you're looking for like yeah i mean xavier thomas from clemson's here he's interesting like former five-star edge um older player but you know, again, has traits, um, potentially someone you'd want to be looking at. Uh, ben Sinnott, that like, I know people are like, oh, the Falcons tight end, you know, whatever. Ben Sinnott is actually a really interesting tight end. He's like a do it all. And like, if the Falcons aren't going to carry a fullback, which the Rams typically didn't, um, Ben Sinnott can play fullback and do all that kind of stuff. Um, so he could be interesting. He's a great blocker. Uh, over two yards per route run, run, which is exceptional for a tight end. He could be like a long-term tight end too for you. And at this point in the draft in the fifth round, like I know they don't like need a tight end for real, but I mean, it's like interesting. Um, And like, you know, running back too, like Tyrone Tracy, former wide receiver at running back. Like it's, again, it's not like a huge need for this team, but he is kind of interesting to me. Um, but Let's see what else. Yeah. Don't forget that you have Avery Williams. Exactly. You know, yeah. If, if he's back healthy. Hard. Mm-hmm. receiver running back that's that's the name that people are like i don't know i think they're sort of underestimating this like remember williams had what the highest net return yardage like per return le- before yeah. he got hurt yeah yeah that's gonna mm-hmm. be a big deal and i mean oh yeah he also has ray ray mcleod in there now for special teams mm-hmm. I, I feel like it's gonna be it's gonna be shot in arm definitely yeah. for special teams. yeah um Let's see. I'll, I would throw in, I know somebody asked about offensive tackle. This is also a spot where you could look at like a swing tackle type guy or, uh, and like Javon Foster from Missouri. He's definitely someone I would consider in this range. Um, like just a good tackle, kind of like a, just, just to like a, a, an above average athlete. And I know that's not really the, the fact like the Falcons MO previously that they were always like hyper focused on these zone like ultra athletic offensive linemen, but the Rams were not married to the zone scheme nearly as much. They still like ran a lot of zone, but they also ran some power stuff and they didn't necessarily need their offensive linemen to be like the most athletic. Um, so Javon, Javon Foster is interesting. Um, let's see. So maybe we'll do, we can see what the wide receiver. The other thing here. about tackle that you need to, that we should consider is it depends on how many they're going to keep on the roster. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you have Matthews and McGarry. They're, they're the starters. Storm Norton was really good last year. Mm-hmm. Like, Storm Norton in relief was a yeah. revelation yeah, yeah. last season, and they, you know, re-signed him. So, it, it's one of those things where will you keep a fourth tackle on the roster? And, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to, then it doesn't make sense to spend a fifth. Um, right. especially if you're going to sign him to the practice squad, that just opens up the possibility of him getting signed somewhere else. Right. Um, so that, that's something to consider when it comes to tackle. And I know I'm saying this as someone who's advocating for Joe Alt. I wasn't advocating for Joe Alt because of positional need. I was advocating for Alt because I, I just think he's better as a player, as a prospect than, yeah. you know, most of these other guys in the, almost everyone in the draft actually. And, you know, taking Alt, in my opinion, would have opened the door to straight up trade McGarry, you know, right. for, you know, a, maybe a day two pick. Maybe maybe you can get a second rounder. Who knows? Like, I don't know maybe. what his mark is. Yeah. Um, but that's not the case with taking a tackle here. 
um, because here you're looking at, you know, the question you're asking yourself is, will he be able to beat out Storm Norton? And I mean, I know I'm I'm banging the drum for Norton, but he like he looked better than Caleb McGarry at, at certain points last season. Like, right? I I feel like he's an incredible value at swing tackle. Um, so that that's that's just my reasoning for not going with the tackle right yeah. now. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna put just to move us forward. I'm gonna put uh, Xavier Thomas at edge, Ben Sinnott at tight end foster at offensive tackle and then i'm going to add luke mccaffrey at wide receiver into the mix too um and then we'll see because i think i think honestly like you get and and, you know tyrone tracy the running back like he's interesting but again like i just i don't know if they're going to spend a premium like and the fifth round pick isn't like a premium pick like don't get me wrong but um you know i don't know that they're really going to necessarily emphasize getting that running i think you can kind of just like wait and see who's there like late because they got two sixths as well um, and we'll see if we get to those or not. I've got about five more minutes here probably, but um, so we'll give you guys a couple minutes to weigh in on this pick and then we'll probably just do like a blitz to get these last two six uh, picked. But I think it's at this point in the draft, like I know everyone's like really interested in filling needs, but you don't really like fill needs um, at this point, because again, like these types of players, like in the fifth round, they're probably not going to be starters for you. They might be able to be rotational players or like depth players, or there's some positions where you can get like fringe starting guys. Like you can get blocking tight ends. that will start for you at this point in the draft. You can get running backs. that will start for you at this point in the draft. You can get like rotational wide receivers at this point in the draft, but you know, in terms of like starting offensive tackles or like starting caliber players, you're not typically going to find them here unless they're like developmental or they have some kind of limitations. Like Javon Foster, I think is a like potentially starting caliber tackle, but he does have athletic limitations. So he's not going to appeal to all schemes. Um, This is where uh, I get on my soapbox and, you know, start my conspiracy theory about, you know, I, I tweeted it out. There is no way the Falcons did not get Justin Schaefer and Damari Salyer mixed up. A couple yeah, years. they just. There's yeah. no chance. There's yeah. no way that that. There's no way that this team looked at those guys and was like Justin Schaefer is the better prospect. Yeah, I mean, it, we'll never hear about it. You know, nobody will ever admit it. But I am absolutely convinced that they. They got the two names mixed up when when submitting the the uh, the draft paper, and then like they just had to roll with it because that's just incompetence. But also, it's just as incompetent to think that Schaefer is a better prospect. I'm saying this because Sawyer was one of those rare guys who ended up being in you know an impact starter right from the as a sixth right. round as a yeah. sixth round tackle. Um, and I mean, to this day, he's, you know, starting with the Chargers and he's probably going to have a very long NFL career. Meanwhile, Schaefer got waived yeah. after, you know, some camps and practice squad uh, stints. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's just me getting on, you know, putting on my tinfoil hat right now and going conspiracy theorist because, I mean, come on, like there's there's just no way. Yeah, there's just no way. Yeah, that's that's better than the alternative, which is that maybe they did actually have Schaefer over uh, Salier, which would we're just not going to entertain what's worse. that. That's yeah. the thing; I don't know what's worse. <laughs> what is worse, honestly? But all right, maybe, we got a tie. Maybe we'll pull with that, you know? Yeah, some... yeah. Maybe, yeah. Just, we'll get do some investigative reporting on that one, maybe someday. But um, all right, we got a tie between Xavier Thomas, the edge rusher, and Javon Foster, the tackle. I imagine you're leaning towards edge, Adnan. Uh, yeah. cause I, cause of your, your thoughts on tackle at this point, but I'll, I'll let you pick since I've done so many of these damn mocks. So, yeah, um, at this point, if, uh, if it is, uh, the tie break, I'll, I'll play, I'll play the role of a vice president here and, and break the tie in, uh, in the Senate. I'll go nice. with, uh, I'll go with Xavier Thomas. Um, like I said, I just don't think that any, rookie tackle in the fifth round you know and moving forward this is nothing uh against any of the tackles on the board right now i don't know if they'll beat out storm norton for that um for that swing tackle job and i don't want to risk having a fifth round pick completely poached 
off right. of the practice squad because I'm still expecting every player in this, you know, I'm expecting every fifth rounder to make the 53 man roster, you know, barring yeah. injury. Yeah, yeah. At the very least. And, you yeah, know, uh, we have, we have a lot, we, we've taken law to Arnold Epicades there. Jury's out on D'Angelo Malone. We have a couple of those, you know, veteran guys. I, I think Lorenzo Carter is still under contract. Um, I think Bud Dupree is still under contract as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, he's not. He's not. Oh, he's not? Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, that makes it even easier then. I'm, Bud Dupree yeah. may be back uh, eventually. Who, who knows what, what goes on in the middle of summer. The team could bring back some of these guys that they let go of. Calais Campbell looks like he may be gone. Yeah. So it wouldn't be wouldn't be the worst idea to double down on edge uh, in this draft, even though you took one in the first round. So my pick will be Xavier Thomas here. Cool, cool. All right. So we're going to make these ones rapid fire style. Luke McCaffrey is still here at 187 in the sixth round. I think I think you're a big fan of his as well, if I remember correctly, but um, especially at this point in the draft. Yeah, in the sixth round. In the sixth round. This is where during the draft show we'll be like, "All right, you know, Terry, let's trade out of this pick so we can get out of here a bit earlier." You know, today. At least there's no sevens. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because we'll have been streaming for like five hours at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how many of these six they end up having, but yeah, we'll we'll take Luke for one of these because I know he had some votes in the previous one. I don't know if there's any other positions you want to hit. Like, there's. We could take a running back if you've got somebody in this range you like. We could take, you know, um, yeah, it's just at this point, it's kind of, uh, we've hit all the major needs, honestly. So, like, yeah. let's see. I, sometimes I take linebackers here. Sometimes I just take Frank Gore Jr. just because it's like, there's no way he doesn't have, like, some kind of productive NFL career, right? I mean, he's Frank Gore Jr., so... I mean, his dad was the definition of uh, longevity. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Mad Tom K made a good point. It's just here. It's whoever's the best special teams player, probably. That's that's the quickest way to the fifty-three man. And they've done it past, you know, in the past where they've specifically taken a player late just for spe- Avery Williams. We just talked about it. I think he was what a fifth rounder. You know, yeah, he was yeah. specifically taken as a return man. And, I mean, it's worked out, well, until he got hurt. Yeah, um, there, there is still... a linebacker here, speaking of special teams, named Steel Chambers. Ooh. And I feel like there's no way he Ooh. could not be a good special teamer, right? Like, I mean, yeah. that's an elite name. That 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 is one of the, you know, hashtag elite names of the draft. It's... Yeah. You know, we you could say he could fire one out out of the chamber. Yeah, you know, when he gets a tackle. So yep, yep. Steal uh, for the first. I mean, I feel like this guy is like a hall of famer. Obviously, yeah. Um, he, yeah. You know, he's a hardened player like like Steel. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what it comes down to in the sixth round. Yeah, also, I don't know anything that, about him otherwise, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> future all name team. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm down to just take Steel Chambers right here. Also, because that's... we've already we filled our dogs quota. Had we yep. not taken McConkey, I, I would be pounding the table for a bulldog because we yep. have to yep. take at least one. Um, you know, if you want to be, you want if you want to build a champion, you have to take champions, and yep. you know, nobody personifies champions like the Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> yes, um, absolutely. Well, guys, uh, there you have it. Real quick, we'll recap it. Appreciate everyone for hanging out with us. Laya to Latu at 8, which the Draft Simulator loves. Lad McConkey at 43. The Draft Simulator really loved that one. Tavondre Sweat at 74. Again, another A grade for the Falcons there. Uh, draft Simulator didn't like Dadrian Taylor Demerson, but, you know, the Draft Simulator is wrong sometimes, right? Uh, we got a B-plus for Chris Abrams-Drain at 109. We got an A for Xavier Thomas at 143. And then a B for Luke McCaffrey at 187 and uh, a C plus for linebacker steel chambers at uh, 197. But I mean, I think you have to add extra points for the name. So um, uh, that's easily at the very least a B just because of the name. Yeah. Yeah. But they, we get a B plus overall. Um, and like, I mean, I don't really care about that. It doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It's just for fun. But uh, yeah, the simulator was jealous. They, they couldn't 
fathom how many good players we got uh, with these picks. But yeah, the, the only simulator I recognize is Matt Sims. Exactly. Uh, Until he returns, you know. Yeah. That's one of the deeper cuts for, you know, the people who are here for that Hall of Fame game play by play in yep. what was it, 2021? Yep. Back when we could yeah. still do play by play. Man, I miss I miss the play by play days. I miss days. those days. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know I, I hate that we felt can't so, do it. Before, but so yeah. long ago. Yeah. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, channel members for coming in and spending uh, some time with us. We appreciate everyone's support. We will have another patron and channel member live mock prior to the draft. And then, of course, we'll have like one public one, probably like the Wednesday before, like last year, where we nailed two picks, by the way. Congratulations to all of us. We did a great job. Um, you know, we got uh, the first two, correct, uh, with Bijan and Matthew Bergeron. And I believe that was the only time all year we drafted Matthew Bergeron. So uh, yeah, really was. just yeah. prescient by us, I think. Great job by us. But thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, again, for those watching this later, please like subscribe, consider joining up with the patrons and channel members. This looked like a good time, right? So you could, you could get in on this among other things. Uh, leave that five star review in your podcast platform of choice. Thanks again to bet online for sponsoring tonight's episode. Thanks again, guys, for joining us. We will be back of course on Wednesday for the next episode of Falcoholic live at 8 PM Eastern until then folks. Thanks again for hanging out. We will see you next time on the Falcoholic live and dirty birds and brews. Have a great night folks.